Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Leedy. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Intelligent Fastener extension within Career Parametric. It's all about applying fasteners to parts and assemblies much faster and much easier. Now before I go over the capabilities of the extension, first I usually like to take a step back and talk about some of the challenges that we were hearing from our customers that you might be running into as well. One of those main challenges is that designing with fasteners is a very tedious, repetitive, and error-prone process, especially when it comes to parts changing or fasteners changing. It can be very difficult and uh, cumbersome to go back and edit all the existing fasteners we, we, we might have had or reapply new ones on my particular part. We're also seeing issues with designers creating duplicate part numbers or using non-standard parts. So the same bolt shows up at different times or the engineers aren't using all the same fasteners. Just a little bit difficult to manage a whole library of fasteners and standard parts that we might be using on multiple different assemblies. And there's also no fast way to verify that the correct fastener lengths are being used. Is it right the first time, but then as soon as I go through and make a part change, now I have an issue. In this case, we made a part change onto this part, but now I can see my bolt is way too long for the particular setup that we're in. We run into this all the time. And the standard process is go back, delete the existing one, and assemble in a new one in the in the the old location. It can be very difficult to manage a change like that. It's also time consuming to correctly add all the extra stuff that comes with the fasteners, the clearance holes, the threads, because it's not just enough to have the fastener in place. It needs all that extra stuff. It needs to have the right hole, the right size with the right notes so that I know that I can push this into manufacturing. It's also very time consuming to go back and change fasteners and holes. So repeating a lot of work that you've already completed when you have to go through and make a change onto something like this. So Intelligent Fastener Extension is all about tackling some of those problems. It's designed to make the process of applying fasteners and modifying fasteners within our parts and assemblies much faster. So this comes with a comprehensive library of standard nuts, bolts, screws, and washers. And this is a huge library that is very much industry standards. And you can see some of the different standards that we tackle over there on the right. And this is also a flexible and customizable library. So I don't have to just stop it using my industry standards. I can go through and customize anything that's in the library, customize part names, different features, and I can also add in my own parts if I want. Now, when you actually go through and apply them, there's an intelligent selection, so I can go through and look at my fastener length. I can check for compatible hardware, what should go with this particular bolt that I'm looking at. And then there is going to be feedback from Creo to ensure that the fastener conversation is going to be the correct one. And that's going to be with that check screw fasteners that you're looking at over there, which we'll go into in the demonstration. Now, once I have the actual fastener chosen, there's also going to be automatic creation of clearance holes and threads in the adjacent geometry to the actual part that we're placing in here. And the hole sizes are per the actual catalog, and I can go through and modify any of those values if necessary. And this is also where I can add in some optional features, automatically have it put in a counterbore, have it put in a countersink to a particular type of dimension. And there's capabilities to have the assemblies with my standard named convention. So, th so this means that the system's always gonna have the same name, so everyone knows what it is as I'm placing this, as I'm looking through the particular assembly that we're looking at. So in terms of the actual process, if my fastener exists, I pull from the library. So this library can either be local on my own computer or it can also be within our wind chill uh, PDM system. And if the fastener does, uh, does not exist, I can create it on the fly and then add it to the library. So the idea is model it once and then put it in the library so I can reuse it later on. So it's very fast to create a part, add it to the library, and then be able to reuse it later on. In Career 4, there were some additions that were made to this particular extension. One were saved configurations. So if I have the exact same bolt I'm placing in all the time, no matter what particular assembly I'm working on, I can save that off and open it without having to worry about choosing the exact same options and go through the same dialogue every single time I'm, put, I'm, I'm on a new assembly. There's also control over how the hole is actually created. So I can choose, do I want to create the hole in the actual assembly? Do I want to put the hole down to the actual part level? Or do I just not want to create a hole at all? And there were also some changes to better accommodate sub-assemblies as well. So now we can go into the actual process in terms of how this extension is going to be used, and I have a short demonstration to outline that. So for this demonstration of Intelligent Fastener Extension, we're going to be working with this electric motor assembly. 
Now this is extension, once again, is all about placing in fasteners, extremely easy with a whole dedicated user interface. Now we'll start off by just placing in a fastener. So we're gonna place these fasteners on existing holes, axes, or datum points. In this case, we need to put some screws on this side plate. So turn on the datum points, open up, and then using that as a reference, we can open up the fastener interface. Then it's just gonna ask me for a, a point to actually place this on, a starting surface, and this is, in this case, just gonna be the top, and then I can also choose the back surface as well. And then you're gonna get a visualization of the type of fastener it's trying to place into that particular location. And from here, I can go through my catalog or my library of standard screw types to choose the exact type that I want. And there are a lot of different standards. In this case, we're gonna go with the English ANSI standard. And then from that particular standard, I choose the type of screw. So in this case, we're gonna be using a socket head cap screw, but I have a ton of different options in terms of what I actually wanna use for this particular part. And then based off of that, that type of screw, what's gonna be the thread size? What's gonna be the screw size? So messing around with the different sizing options, consistently getting a preview in the bottom left that's showing me how this is actually gonna size up on the particular part that I've chosen. Then I can add in some of that extra stuff, add in a washer, counter bore, change the diameter. And if I place this in, it could also recognize if a particular reference was used as a pattern. In this case, the actual point was patterned out to give me those four holes on the side of this, uh, the four locations for those holes on the side of this plate. So it's gonna automatically apply the same fastener onto all those different locations. And then not only are we getting the actual fastener, the washer and the bolt itself, you're also getting the extra stuff that came with it that I chose from the options. I get the whole size to the exact size that I had made this uh, before. And I also, if I turn my notes on, I have the note automatically given to this. So I can very easily see what type of hole this is and push this into one of my engineering drawings. So now going forward with the demonstration, we're gonna place in a second set of fasteners so we can put some bolts in the bottom plate. And I can choose once again, existing hole, a top surface, a bottom surface, and then that's gonna give me a preview of the type of fastener that it's gonna to try to place in that location. Once again, complete control over my catalog type, the screw type, the washers, and it always shows me a preview as well. And this preview is really there just to immediately let me see the type of setup that I want and see if there's gonna be any issues with the setup that I've chosen. And otherwise we can accept off that particular screw. Now you notice this time it didn't pattern out all the other ones on the bottom of this plate. And that's just because we didn't make the rest of those holes with a pattern feature. If that's the case, if I wanted to use the same setup in another location with separate references, I go up to the ribbon and I can choose the reassemble command. So this allows me to take an existing fastener combination and just choose new references and place it somewhere else. So we're just going to choose the rest of these different holes in the bottom here, very quickly choose the reference and then apply it and it's going to automatically place that fastener into my particular component. And now if I ever need to go back and edit any of these, I can go through and do the redefine for an existing bolt. So this allows me to open up the screw fastener definition window once again and go back and change something. So maybe I want to change the actual type of fastener this is going to be, or I want to modify the length of it's going to, that it's going to choose. And the system is always updating the image to show me what that change is going to be. And since we had used the reassemble on that particular fastener, it's going to push that change into all the other features or all the other screw types that it had recognized as the same feature. And now we're going to deal with a model change here. So this happens all the time. I get towards the end of my assembly. I think that we're, we're all good. I place in all my fasteners and now I have a model change. So this is going to change the type of fastener that I actually have on this particular model. So we made this part a little bit thicker. So I can still see that the screw is in the right place, but is the screw actually the right size now? And if we go through and do the check screw fasteners, I can see and have the system do a check for me and see if there's going to be anything wrong. And in this case, it's flagging an error. It's saying that one of my bolt sets is gonna to be too short. And just clicking on that particular error brings me back into the actual setup. So now I can go through, use the visualization down there at the bottom to tell me if I have the correct size now as well. And if I make it too large, it flags it once again and says, hey, you're gonna have an issue with this one. You probably wanna choose a shorter length. So here it's all green, so we're all good. So we can okay this off. And that's gonna push that change back into my assembly. And then once again, since those were made off as a pattern, I can see that change pushed into all those other parts as well. And now the system is telling me that it's gonna be okay. So now at the bottom fastener, we can look at some of the further capabilities. So there might be a few more details that we wanna look at. 
uh, looking at maybe the counter bore, we could see what options that we want to do here, what type of counter bore is it going to be, what's the exact size. Once again, the visualization, I can see that, so I can make sure that I'm choosing the correct one for the size that I have chosen for this. I can also choose if I want to do this on the second side. So on the bottom side of this, where the just that washer and the nut are, we want to do the counter bore down there instead. So I can, again, make sure that I'm changing the correct one based off that visualization. And then that is going to push that change into my actual part. So I have to model the counter bore. I have to size it up. All I had to do is go through that interface, let the system do a lot of that for me. So this is really the power of the intelligent fastener extension, making it a lot easier to place our fasteners into our crate assemblies. So now just to wrap up what we were talking about for this particular demonstration. So what kind of value can this bring to you and to your process? Uh, the main value point here is dramatically reducing design time. So we did a test on this particular part that you're looking at right here, and it's about 60% faster to build this part with all the different fasteners and cutouts. So, and starting from scratch is going to be 90% faster. So you're getting, uh, it's a lot faster to apply all these extra things that you're having to put into your design all the time. The whole goal here is to reduce our part number proliferation as well. So there's going to be some costs associated with all the different part numbers that we're storing in some of the standard libraries that we're dealing with all the time. This really reduces that cost and gets people all using the same thing on the same team, using the same standard fasteners. And overall, just improve the design quality, ensure that we actually have the right fasteners, have the system do a sanity check for us, and then apply them very easily onto a part and allow us to innovate a little bit more on something that might take a little more of a design time instead of having to worry about all this tedious repeat work that is just really taking up time doing it the very manual way. Now within Creo, there is a light module of this, so you can very easily go through and just try this out. Now it doesn't support a lot of the different things that we went through, dial pins, customizations, um, automatic updates of everything. You can't use some certain things as external references, but this will allow you to at least be able to go through, play with it on a part, and be able to see if it's the, uh, the right solution for you. And with that, that is our intelligent fastener extension.